uh, we are heading home in this episode. We have got a distance of 1,848 kilometers to go to reach home. It's uh, going to take us a day or two to get there. So <laughs> enjoy this trip home with us. Marlot Park. I'd like to go see what it looks like there. Yeah. Through the sugarcane fields of Mpumalanga, eh? Yes, it looks that way. How am I going to um, stop looking for game? Yeah, oh, that's going to be difficult. I just thought that this rock is something. <laughs> Arriving at the entrance to Marlot Park. Willy Fun Drive. Is this called Willy Fun Drive? That address was some number in Willy Fun Drive. Oh, okay. And I see they say Danger Lions. Wow. Is this okay. Marlot Park? Look at this. We live in nature, yeah, too, eh? I mean, one could easily think you're back in the park. Definitely. Definitely. They've just cleared the areas that they're building on. really wild, eh? Yes, and I love it. So do I. Look here, this is like... Why? This is so nice. I like, I like. Well, the wilder the better for us. Yeah. Five more in there in the bush. I could live here. I could definitely live here. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Leipert. Yep. I can live. Oh, Leipert Olifant. I mean, those are my two animals. <laughs> Isn't that a sign? Yeah. <laughs> two signs. <laughs> in front there's a male kudu can't we go back it's as if we're in the Kruger Park oh you show off check the impala they must live a chill life here yeah sure, they're so safe here curio those brightly colored caftans and There's fabrics. Shop. Kruger Africa safaris. We saw them many times. Yes. Bush Center. Water park. Boscombe Base, Butchery, Bottle Store, Car Wash, Estate Agent, Field Security. Hairdresser. Okay. 
pretty busy here. It's quite a big holiday resort. Oh, look at look those super tunes. Yeah, slides and everything. Busy here too. It is, eh? Looks like this is their little shopping center. The mall. With a hardware <laughs> shop. Yes. Yeah. I saw they call it the mall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and what would you say? This is about 15 kilos from the park? I would say about 15 kilos. We didn't measure, but I'd estimate. Maybe yeah. 20? At the, at the most, 20 kilometers. This is so cool. In Marlot Park there's a zebra as well. Most probably not only one. No, I saw some on the other side. Grazing close to a property. Yeah. I can have my Rice Krispies looking at zebra. Yeah, and Impala. Yes, my house. And I'll be living straight across from the Impala. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> Impala aren't always there. Thank you. Thank you. That was very interesting. Very. I, uh, I love the wildlife. Just roaming around there. Absolutely. Do you think folks live here, babe? <laughs> it's like 15 minutes and you're in the park. Oh, crazy. Hi. I mean, I lived a, a hundred kilometers from the park as a little girl, but it had a different meaning back then, yes. you know? We just can't seem to get away from the side tippers, eh? And these are full of chrome. Is it yes. chrome or yes. chromium? Chrome. From the mine at Steelport. Yes. Funny, we met a gentleman in the park who works at the mine on Steelport. Look at this! Crazy. This is hectic. What? So this is the How's end? Oh, no. Oh, yes. <gasps> They're in the what? queue. What? They're in the queue to offload. Or are they on the way to the border post? I have no idea what's going on here. Malalani 13th. This is wild. I just want to see when we go over the... Of course, this, this is what I want to see. to a border post. I mean, we've never been here, no. so we have no idea. Look how long it goes. <gasps> no! I'm going to bring the camera in and just continue filming. Yeah, we on the N4. It's yeah. the major highway. Can't do 50 k's an hour, yeah. No, but this, this, what? I have to say that this is officially the most we've ever seen. Yeah. Never seen by far, movie. by far, by far. I don't understand this. You can't comprehend. It's hundreds. Yeah. 
This is a whole day operation for uh, these folks. Uh, this is, this, look at this. I think we measure the distance and then we say how long it still continues yeah. for. When I stopped filming the last clip but we, uh, until now, we've done 3.6 kilometers and they're still going, these trucks. I've never seen anything like this before. So you've noticed some by Mozambique uh, trucks with yes. Mozambique uh, license plates. Yes. Um, and I saw a sign for the Lebombo border post. So I think all these trucks must be going across the border. I see it's from the Dwarsrefeer Crow Mine near Steelport and Leidenburg. And they, crow, they mine chrome ore there. So it's chrome. But I suppose you can't find online if this goes over the border into Mozambique, eh? I don't know. I can check. Because this just, I don't understand this. Where is it going to? <laughs> well, at the moment it's going nowhere, but I mean. <laughs> The ore produced is sold both on the export market and locally. I think we are reaching the end now. With the people driving on our side of the road. <gasps> this is 45. We've done 10 kilometers and these trucks are starting to pile up like this. Yes, the next one coming to park. And with roughly, I'd say, three per hundred meters, give or take, yeah. you can figure out how many they are. That's insane. I see it's Malalani yeah. town. Yes. I'm sure that changed from Malalani. I have no idea. Hey, the Impala station. Hey. <laughs> but we don't have time, unfortunately. Yeah. So we are in the town of Malalani. Someone explained to us how to get to a spa. So we need to stock up on snacks and drinks and that kind of thing. Yes. Druvos is at the top of the list. I'd like some other refreshments. <laughs> are you not divulging any details? I know if I say what I want, people are going to say, Oh, it's so unhealthy, you mustn't drink that, so... Are you talking about a little monster? Yes, I love a monster now and then. A I little don't... monster for the monster. Yeah, it just, it just helps me stay awake and alert on the road. You don't drink it um, at home, so... No, just on our trips. I think you had one the whole three and a half weeks. That's not bad. Nah, I'm pretty good when it comes to that. Busy town, eh? Very. Oh, look at the trees in the parking lot. No! Camel thorn trees in the parking lot. That's fantastic. Look at that. It's beautiful, eh? Whoa. <laughs> I love it. Look how beautiful these trees are. Yeah. All right. We have stocked up on some snacks. More than what we bargained for, actually. There's even a babalas mix in the mix. Exactly, exactly. Even Not, though we don't have babalas. No, no <laughs> babalas today. Um, but listen, I have to share this. I was too late to film. A chicken licken has a drive through in town. But it's not called a drive through it's called a fly through That's pretty cool. <laughs> they have such a sense of humor. I love that. And of course, uh, my darling husband had to choose the worst weekend of the year for us to be on the roads. Right, right. Today is the 15th of December. Obviously, today is also a public holiday uh, ahead of tomorrow's day of reconciliation. And everyone is headed to their respective holiday uh, and home destinations, I think. I'm just going to drive slowly, take my time and be very careful. Seriously. Well, yeah, safety is the main priority. We don't care how long it takes us. There's no pressure to get back home. No. So uh, we're going to take it easy. Here's my monster. Hey. Having his monster. <laughs> <laughs> you love that so much, eh? But I only enjoy the green one. Yeah, I know. And the they don't flavors. always have that. Yeah. But I have this once in a blue moon. I know it's not good for you, but I just... 
You only live once. Exactly. Kumasi Plaza. Yep. 84 Rand. Yeah, we've never been here, hey? No. As I'm reading this article, brace for the busiest day on South African roads this year. Today's the busiest day? Correct. Oh, Even in right. recent memory. Because of the box winning, the schools closing, day of reconciliation, so many contractors and folks have now gone on leave. Oh boy. We should have stayed the whole weekend and left on Monday. We I should told have, eh? you. <laughs> this is pretty, eh? It's beautiful here. Have we ever travelled here? Never. Did you see when we crossed the Jampton River? <laughs> no, I was so concentrating on the traffic now I didn't notice the Jampton River. <laughs> I thought that was quite a funny name. <laughs> Jampton River, love that. Okay, my angel. So, after such an incredible trip, we have to share our final thoughts on a few things. Yep. Um, memories fade and I wish we could feel the way we feel right now that I never want to leave yep but I want us to capture how we feel and and what we experienced in the park the last three weeks so that we can always look back on it and feel it again so just as a summary what was it like being in the Kruger National Park again after 19 years it was even better than what I expected it to be it was absolutely fantastic the, the minute we drove through that gate at Pafuri and we entered the park that feeling of calmness it just just set the tone for the whole trip it was absolutely brilliant from the top right through till the bottom when we came out I loved every minute of it so both of us although we experienced everything together we're still individuals and we have different feelings yes but both of us looked forward the most to how it how the place was going to make us feel yes and did it make you feel the way you wanted to feel yes it did it did no it's if you want to calm down relax completely that's that's the place to go it, it, you just unwind there you just everything you leave myself and a guest that I met there in the park we spoke and we said as you enter the gate you leave your baggage by the gates and then when you come out you'll pick it up again and leave because the baggage that you carry along with you doesn't belong in the park I never picked up mine thank you very much <laughs> for that one listen I'm still very much in my Kruger cocoon eh? I'm not happy with the outside world. I don't want to be in the outside no. world. But I will echo every single thing you said. With me, there was a tiny bit of apprehension. 19 years is a long, long time. Yes. And we had heard many stories from friends and family and acquaintances about how the park had changed, about how commercial it's become, how people misbehave, etc., 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 and we were apprehensive of that. Yes. But we didn't see much of it, and I was not. I mean, commercial, yes, especially in the south. But that's we can't stand in the way of them doing that. Something I must say though is, is that the staff members are extremely friendly. Yes. Extremely friendly. Wherever you go, they are so friendly. The cleaning ladies the gentlemen that work in the garden, the people that fill your vehicle at the filling stations, those in the shops, at the restaurants, are very helpful and very friendly. With the odd exception, I will say, um, but I agree with you for the most part, but we're also exceptionally chatty. 
Yes. And we want to know how long everyone's been there and how things have changed yes. and how things have changed for us and stuff like that. But for me, it's the greatest place on this planet. I was in a world, in a different world for the last three weeks and it's exactly three weeks today yes. that we entered Bafuri Gate and uh, I will not exchange this experience for anything in the entire world. It was fantastic from day one to day 22. Yes. I think we are approaching Mbombela, which is the old Nelspreit. It looks like a ginormous place. Uh, Look how beautiful these buildings are. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a big town, eh? Yeah. No, it's since we've seen it last, I think it's grown a tad. Yeah, I think it's a lot of Mbombela. Now spread. And I'll have you know that Mbombela is a city. What? As we're driving here through the sappy pine plantations on either side of the road, we just heard on the radio that between 1,500 and 2,000 vehicles are passing through the toll roads at uh, different locations throughout the country. So that's pretty hectic at this stage. And that's per hour, babe. Per hour, yes. Mashadu Plaza. You guys will never guess what we have to pay here. I'm telling you, it is wild. It is wild. Our I'll first you. one. Yes, I, no, say, say. Our first one over 100. That's crazy. And how much? 112, I think it is. Yes. Oh. <laughs> there are the amounts. We are here at Belfast One Stop, just filled up. And it is busy. Crazy busy. So I think we're here. The next town is Middleburg. Yep. And then Emalatleni, which we all knew as Witbank. Yeah. Um, but I would like to talk to you about a few observations while we were in the park. Okay. We made a deliberate effort to overlook them and um, for them not to deter us from enjoying ourselves fully. But I still think it's worth mentioning. No, oh, actually, what we did find wrong didn't affect our enjoyment whatsoever. No. 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 We saw so many vehicles speeding that. that I, I, would, I would be on a toll road, you're, up, you're allowed to go up to, on most of them, up to 50 kilometers an hour, which I hardly ever did. Uh, I, would, I used to, the, the comfortable speed for me on a toll road to be able to view, do viewing was about 30 kilometers an hour. Sometimes I'd look again, I'll be doing 40. But the cars would come flying by. You can at least see they're doing like 70 kilometers an hour, 80 kilometers an hour. But it looked, I don't know how many of them were guests, but a lot of them you can see are people that work there. Uh, contractors, staff, um, delivery vehicles that were del delivering things over there. That, that yeah, for me, uh, you know, um, you and I once, maybe 25 years ago, saw an Impala being struck yes. um, outside um, Letaba, maybe five kilometers on the Mopani Road, an Impala male um, being struck. And, um, you know, that stayed with us all these years. We even uh, asked a ranger to come and see us that night to make sure that the Impala is not suffering yes. because the Impala hobbled out into the field um, because right, that's not natural. Broke, was broken, yeah. yeah, that's not natural in our view. What worried me was the uh, amount of wildlife that was killed. Yeah. I mean, just yesterday, just in one day, we saw a lilac breasted roller and two snakes. Yes. And in our whole time there, we saw six snakes slithering across the roads. Yes. Now, that means that what is two out of six? 33% of the snakes that we saw were run over. Yeah. 
that's not a good statistic and once we did have to go 50 kilometers an hour to get back to um, our gate in time yes. and people came speeding past I think sometimes 60 70 you even said 80 you thought yeah. the one person Definitely. and uh, yeah for me it's the it's it's the danger to wildlife is my only only objection and then the last one is one that really made us feel quite uncomfortable yeah that was a strange thing because check-in time is strictly at two o'clock sometimes that would help you at half past one uh, with camping with especially. Camping. Uh, oh, with camping they, they don't have an issue if you come earlier. That's because you can go pick, most of them you can go pick any campsite. Right. But with those bungalows and the tents, they're pretty strict on their two o'clock. And like I said, sometimes they allow you to come half past one, maybe maybe one o'clock. But the checkout is at ten o'clock. And um, what made it pretty uncomfortable for us both was the fact that there were the cleaning ladies would start hovering around you from about seven o'clock in the morning you know and that is like they're trying to push you to get out so that they can finish their work you know that that made it pretty unpleasant for us there were some times where you were walking around the camp and i was waiting at the bungalow or hut or whatever it may be and they were literally waiting for us to leave yes and it was early it was eight yes so yeah that that was a bit uncomfortable i think but it still was the best experience that I've had in the last 19 years. Oh, I love it. We just passed this place and it says IPP Coal Country. We are in coal country. You know us in clouds. Those Check are pretty out. beautiful clouds. As we approach Emalatheni, yep. I just looked up what industry they do in Emalatheni because you and I both thought it was also coal. Yes. And interestingly, but Punk was renamed in 2006 to Emalatheni, which means place of coal. That's interesting. <laughs> Confirmation. Welcome to Gauteng. Oh, and I saw a board that says Bronkospreit. I've got traumatic memories of hostel. Yeah, you, time, share, eh? you did share that before. No, uh -uh. <laughs> I don't want to go to Bronco Sprite this time. <laughs> it's quite a major roadblock here. Yeah. I think we're about 30 k's from Pretoria. Still yes. on the N3. N4. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just heard about the people sitting on the N3 on their way to Durban or Natal. Quite a jam here now. Yeah, because of the roadblock, yeah. Yeah. They've got to do what they've got to do. Exactly. We might get some on our way too. I'm sure we will. So for now, I think we've made the decision. Oh, Pretoria. 24 k 24. For now, I think we've made the decision that we'll overnight at Kruenstadt. Yes. So I have tentatively lined up accommodation and we'll reassess. But if it's already quarter past three, I don't think we'd get much further. No, no, no. I think Grunstadt's going to be perfect. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So arguably, the most exciting part of Kruger yeah. is the sightings. That's it. I mean, we could go anywhere, right? Yes. But... There's no wildlife like in Kruger. Oh, man. So, let us start by what you and I wished we see, we would see, but didn't get to see. Yes. You go. Cheetah. Yes, we missed out on a cheetah. Yes. We looked so hard. We saw so many black magnets on the sightings yes. board, but we no, just... Couldn't find one. Yep. We and we spoke it. to so many people that said, yes, we just saw a cheetah, or we saw a cheetah there, or we saw a cheetah there, but not for us. Not for us. And then the other was this uh, antelope. Yes. Uh, the eland. Yes. Um, Artebius and Liechtenstein Artebius. Right. And a sable. And a sable. Ooh, sable. Didn't see them now. So tell me yes. of the big five. Yes, ma'am. Did we see lion? Yes. Did we see leopard? Yes. Did we see elephant? Yes. Did we see buffalo? Yes. 
and did we see rhino yes <laughs> and that was my most exciting sighting exciting sighting that i saw was, yes yeah. and, and they're your favorite animal they they're are. not necessarily mine mine is the leopard and the elephant i can't decide between the two <laughs> but the rhino was my special most special sighting too with everything that's going on around them yeah. i just don't know if we'll always get to see them uh, so whenever we see them we absolutely treasure those sightings and we were fortunate to see three uh, we were very lucky to see three and now uh, i'm really happy that we did get to see them it's true what you say we don't know with, with the poaching going on now, uh, hopefully they can survive this. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. And in our big six, we saw many, many, many giraffes. Oh, yes. <laughs> many giraffes and little ones. Yeah, so that was all good. Now I want to ask you about the little five. <laughs> Let's start with the two out of the five that we did see. Yes. Which was the? Uh, was it the red bulled um, buffalo weaver? Yes. Yes, that was the one. And the other one, you've got me stumped now. Leopard tortoise. Leopard tortoise. We did see the leopard tortoise, yeah. But the elephant shrew. Oh, that would have been cute to see with his little trunky, yeah. The rhino beetle. That we never saw. And the ant lion eluded us. Oh, no, we didn't see them. Yeah. Now, the secret seven. Okay, yes. Let's start with the one we saw. What was the secret seven? No, 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 the two. We, we saw, saw two. two. We saw the genet. We saw the genet. And we saw the honey badger. Honey badger, no. Wildcat. Honey badger is not part of the secret seven. Oh, well, what part is the honey badger then? The honey badger doesn't feature. It's just you and I are unlucky to never see them. But we got to see one. Okay, so yes, you're right. It was the African wildcat, which we saw in uh, Satara. With a baby. With a little baby. Yep. Yes, yes. And the genet. The genet, yes. Which we saw in Tamboti camp. With uh, the honey that's badger. That's why I got confused with the honey yes. badger. Yes, yes, yes. Now the others of the secret seven, serval, nope. No. Um, Art Wolf, good heavens, no. nope. Pangolin, I would have died, yeah. no. Porcupine, no. I would have died again, <laughs> no. Nope. And then, uh, did I say serval? Yes, you did. Civet is the other one. Civet is the other one, yeah. Uh, did I say all of them? So it's Civet, yes, Art Wolf, Serval, Janet, Wildcat, Pangolin, Porcupine, yes. yes. Now last, but by no means least, Actually, the most important category, and I'm rather upset about this category, is the ugly five. I don't even know how they can have a category like that. <laughs> Good heavens, none of them are ugly. Okay, yes. And okay. you know what the weirdest is, is that we saw all of them. <laughs> so I'll start. Yes. We don't subscribe to the sentiment that they're ugly, just so you know. Yeah. Warthog, tick. We we saw that and we saw many and little babies as well. Oh, I saw the four babies again this morning in Crocodile Bridge yeah. Camp. Vulture? Yes. Tick. Blue wildebeest. I don't see how they can call it ugly. It's unique. It's not ugly. Just has a long face. <laughs> but tick. Yes. Hyena. Definitely so. Yes. And you smelt. were the hyena spotter. Yes. And then lastly the marabou stalk. We saw that too, yes. Our first roadblock. Yeah. and then it started raining. Yeah. To talk with your mouth full. But I'm on holiday. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing it. Yes, yes. How does it taste? Very nice. Malalan is a uh, bosch. It's stunning, eh? Very nice, Drua bosch. And cheap. Yeah, 250 bucks a kilo. 
Wowzer. No, I think you're wrong. A little bit more. 259 rand a kilo. So, really? Yeah. That's not bad. Wow. Not at all, and it tastes very nice. Baba last mix yes. it was very salty. But it's done, it's gone. But I only bought 50 rands worth. Yeah, I found that very salty. That's why it's Baba last mix. <laughs> Okay, so Curtis was right. The labels were all torn off the stickers, but I found them. The Druevors was two fifty nine ninety nine a kilo. I find that very reasonable. And the Baba Last Mix two eighty nine ninety nine. I could have given that a skip, but the Druevors is really stunning. We are just coming into Kruenstadt. And it's very interesting to see that it's 2022 Quela's Town of the Year, Dorp van Jaar. That's cool. Yeah. I had no idea. Neither did I. Okay. Yeah. It looks like an organized place. It then. does, eh? We have 1.2 kilometers to go. Four minutes to six. Yes. Nice trees. Established suburb. Yes. There it is. Yeah. So this is where we're staying for the night. There is a braai over here. There's a swimming pool. This is our place. Look at look. Two beds here, the kitchen, lounge, we've got Wi Fi. It's the main bedroom. This is nice and neat. the bathroom I like this enough space that's for sure so we are settled into our place and uh, it's time for us to just settle down and relax here in Kronstadt we've got a nice little place to stay here so we're gonna have something to eat and then just Go to bed and see you guys in the morning. If you enjoyed this video so far, please give us a thumbs up and uh, enjoy the rest of our trip tomorrow. On all our travels and of all the decorations and the overnight accommodations that we have stayed, this little guy absolutely stole my heart last night. He slept with me, but he is the cutest little thing. He's a sleeping bear. He can't be in any other position. He has to sleep, but the one eye is half open. I don't know what his name is, but he's the cutest thing. I'll always remember Kronstadt and think of him.
Good morning. So we are getting ready to hit the road, leaving Kronstadt. We had a good rest, but yeah, the sounds are fantastic over here. So, so Kronstadt has a, a mill, premium milling, and yes, all the um, corn cobs or millistronke, which free staters are well known for making brides with. This is fantastic. I love it. That is brilliant. Yeah. Ah, we had a quite a nice stay here at Mark Yourself Place guest house. Which means make yourself at home. Yes. Look when the alarm clock went off this morning <laughs> at 4.30. Yeah. I told you, uh-uh, 10 more Another minutes. Another 10 minutes, please. Oh, <laughs> I'm just going to sleep until 11 o'clock when we get home. Yeah. It's, that's what we're going to have to do, eh? Definitely for a few days. Yeah. We will definitely have to just sleep late a bit. <laughs> Quarter past five. Yeah. We're not sure we'll ever get back here to explore. It's just so far from, far away from home. But our eye fell on the station building. It's absolutely destroyed. Yeah, in Kronstadt. Oh yes, we're still here. And then there's this beautiful steam locomotive. It's a disaster. Even the the tri that car is still full of gravel. This is some of the worst destruction we've seen. At one point they still painted the stone. nothing left of it now. They even built cages in front of the windows and doors. Do you see it? Yes. That didn't help. I don't see any here. No. And then the old loco. Oh. This thing here is still full of gravel. I don't know what one Full of chalk. Full of coal. It's coal then. They feed into the steam engine. Is that still coal in there? Well, I don't know if it's is coal, but it used to be. It used to be. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's the Methodist Church. That still looks beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic stone building. I'm sure, this is the Dutch Reformed Church and the Boer War, War monuments. War monuments. Yeah. Look at this beautiful church. It's got a cupola on the top. It is phenomenal. Wow. Look at the gardens. Yeah. Oh, goodness, no. What is here? I think this is the town hall. Oh, that's still standing. That's fantastic. Tourism Information Center. It must be. stone buildings still look fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Are we going to go over the false river now? It's a pretty bridge. Cool. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Was there's, there no caravan park? There's, there's a big resort over here. Yeah, there's the, yes, the caravan park here on your left. I remember you showed me that in the past. Yes. We were here in a big, in a busy season, but it's December and it's not busy. Yeah. There are no caravans. Nothing. This used to be a huge caravan, huge, uh, lovely resort. They had water, hot water pools and stuff. I don't know if that still exists. Kruen Park. Kruen Park, yes. There's not a single caravan. Yeah, that's. Or tent. Yeah. So, I see the hat is still on and we've left the park long ago. No, the hat comes off when we walk into our house at home because this is still part of the Kruger Park trip. <laughs> Not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're clinging on to every last moment. Yes, I am. <laughs> um, listen, we forgot one thing yesterday in our recap. Yes. 
Uh, everyone knows I'm like a behind the scenes type of vibe. But um, I so appreciate, uh, well, we both appreciate everyone who uh, came to say hi yes. in the Kruger Park and who watch our videos and who enjoy them. It was awesome to meet you guys. It was really nice uh, chatting to you and uh, seeing that you love our videos like you do. It's fantastic. Thank you so much. And, that, um, and who love the Kruger Park yes. as much as we do. Yes but are lucky enough to go not every 19 years but much more regularly yes. <laughs> and we hope to join that crowd too now yes, yes. so thank you for that we appreciate it it's quarter past six in the morning and the traffic has really picked up already on the N1 uh, there's loads of cars heading down south Verkeerde Fly Plaza. Yeah. The lines are long. And do you think this is just the start of it, I think? Yep. Okay, so um, I'd like us to capture our thoughts on each camp. Yes. Let's start at the very top, first one, Punta Maria. There was no way that my whole plan was to come in at the top. Yes. Start at Pafuri Gate and then sleep that night at Punda Maria. And I was not disappointed. I loved Punda Maria. Um, there was no way that you couldn't sleep there and have a braai the first night. And uh, the, when I took a walk through the camp the following morning and I walked to the camping site and I had a look, there's a swimming pool, beautiful swimming pool. Uh, the camping site looks social and comfortable and then of course the hide that we went to the night after we bride the hide is perfect we saw elephant there buffalo there the next day we saw some antelope impala kudus and stuff so it was it was really nice the place we stayed in was comfortable just opposite the, the, the communal bride i was disappointed that each little unit doesn't have its own bride but then again we socialized with people that were staying Yes, uh, definitely a social camp. The top row of bungalows, there are two of them, are definitely more modern than the bottom row, but we don't mind that. We want it to be close to the braai. Yes. And um, my one negative would be that when there's load shedding, there's no way to put in fuel. Yes. And uh, also the, the lady who was on duty at the filling station during our stay was really very unfriendly. Um, and, you know, I, I think they could do better in that area. Exactly. As we are approaching the City of Roses. Bloemfontein. Yes. I want to chat about Sereni, which was a first for us. Yeah, first time we stayed there. Um, it was pretty wild. I must say the setting itself was like in the natural bush and stuff like that. Which we love. Yes. It's off the grid. It's on solar. That's, that's where the power comes from and um, it was a beautiful little cottage we stayed in. One bedroom, separate lounge, they had a, a veranda that we could look out, a stoop that we could look out onto the boundary fence over the river and um, had a separate kitchen. Um, only problem is the time of the year that we went there, it was extremely hot and had, doesn't have an air conditioner. They have ceiling fans and stuff like that. But that was just moving hot air around, it wasn't cooling anything down. Yeah, uh, we have to keep in mind we arrived during a heat wave. Yeah. And a heat wave in Limpopo is no joke. Um, so everything was hot. Yeah. Um, when I, I went to lie on the bed and the bedding was hot. Yeah. And the ceiling fans, our fan, nothing made a difference. Yeah. Uh, the undercover stoop overlooking the riverbed is fantastic. Yeah. There's no shop in camp. We could only buy um, ice and wood. That's all they sell. Yes. It's totally fine with us. And um, yeah, I also love the wild setting. Yeah. The walk I took around there was brilliant. I walked all around the boundary fence. I uh, saw beautiful little birds and things like little animals and things like that. It was, it was really nice and peaceful. It's really a peaceful camp. True. Not a lot of people around. Yeah. Um, I would visit again but in the cooler months. Definitely. 
I forgot something about Sereni and you did. Yes, we did. Um, what I forgot was to tell you was that there are two hides over there. Uh, not necessarily bird hides, but hides that you can climb in and you sit and you overlook the Mpongolo River. It's a dry riverbed at the moment. But there were zebra, we could see zebra and we could see impalas walking around there. And the birds were beautiful. Yeah. And I forgot to say that the cottage is fully equipped. Yes. Down to a cutting board and a grater, which always makes life very easy. Yeah. I wanted to put in petrol, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to buy anything to eat here now. Look at the lines. No, no. I'm going away. Let's you, just go back onto the N1. You felt like a toasty though. No, I'll just stay without. Oh, look at it here. It's crazy. All right. Let's get back onto the N1. Before all these others do. Yes. <laughs> Next up, washing Wetsi. Yes, Shinguetsi. I'll go first. Okay. I had booked a hut with a ceiling fan. Yes. And communal ablutions. But the heat wave was continuing and uh, Sereni was fresh in our minds. Let me just tell you, it was 42 degrees Celsius. Oh, I felt it. I felt every one of them. So you upgraded us to a bungalow with a bathroom and an air conditioner. Yeah. But then the air conditioner didn't work in our first one. Yes. Very old uh, equipment. Yes. And then they moved us to another one. Yeah. So then we were fine. Yes. Um, I took a walk around and uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely camp. I love Shinguetsi. I uh, went to go look at the campsites, huge camping area. I got ablution facilities, kitchen areas there. There were quite a few camp people camping there already in yes. the heat. So I can oh. just imagine how they were. But some of the people are organized. They got their own little air conditioners that they take with their caravans and their tents and stuff like that. Yes. So, and then uh, the restaurant and the shop were well stocked. We still had nice toasted sandwiches there by the restaurant. Yes, yeah. yes. As we checked the flood levels. Yes. Oh, that was scary. Yeah, if I yeah. can just think of what that must look like. Yeah, exactly. We would have been under the water there. Yeah. We were sitting, yeah. No, I enjoyed Shinguetsi. It was, a, it was lovely seeing it again. And the nice seeing the, um, the fact that there are two entrances to the camp. I never knew that before. Yes. That yes. Uh, back entrance took us, I think, to the Kanidua Dam. A quicker way yes. where we saw our first lions. Yes, yes. So yeah, no, it was a good experience. And I also want to say that Chinguets has also got a special little place for me because that's where I met Johan Boerta, who used to be the the, the presenter on Eris here, who's passed on now. So yeah. oh, of, and and of fifty fifty for of a 50, long time. Yes, yes. Big nature lover. Yeah, yeah. And that's where we bought your hat. That's where we bought mine. Nineteen ninety seven. Yes. <laughs> One thousand kilometers to go. Yes. So then we arrived at Mupani for two nights. Yes, Mupani is uh, another one of those camps that's like wild, booked yes. naturally, and we stayed there for two nights. And our bungalow was so comfortable. Oh yes, the air uh, conditioner worked very well. Oh no, it was it was brilliant. The walk around I took over there, there are massive um, bungalows too, like in the house, it's got six bed bungalows, two bathrooms, uh, I don't know what their cost is, but they were really nice, I had the opportunity to walk through one and just have a look what it looks like. They've got a fantastic swimming pool there, the shop was well stocked, uh, they've got a restaurant, and the view was amazing. Over Pioneer Dam, right? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, I love the wildness of Mubani yeah. and um, it, they did a fantastic job of just integrating the bungalows into the natural surroundings and we're happy whenever any person at reception warned us against honey badgers, monkeys or baboons. For us, people must just not feed them but they add to the atmosphere. Definitely, definitely do. No, it was, I, I enjoyed the two days stay we had. So did I. So it's about 20 past 8. Next town I see is Edinburgh. Yes. We pass the odd truck or the odd truck that comes from the front. But there are not that many big trucks on the road today. Fortunately. Grateful for that. Yes. And super grateful for the beautiful blue skies. 
<laughs> no drops in the air. All right. Then we moved on to Tenze. So was, uh, and it was our first night of camping. Yes. I'll go first. <laughs> Genetically, I'm not a tent camper. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I like my comforts too much. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the ablutions were very clean. And I like the whole feel of the rustic bushfell camp. Yes. The rest of the experience I'll leave to you. No, it was great. I had to come and pitch the tent in a thunderstorm. <laughs> Which was quite a heavy one. Quite a heavy one. But it cooled, it cooled everything down though, fortunately, after that heavy heat wave. And we were on the boundary. Uh, the ablutions were close by. I saw an elephant from the car while you were pitching the tent. Yes, yes. And we're in the, at, at night when we were sleeping, we could hear the hyenas and everything. It was really great. And what I liked about it, when I walked through it, I didn't know that it bordered right on the Moiplas picnic spot. So the Moiplas picnic site was just behind Senze Rustic Camp. So that was, that was interesting for me to see. The following morning, the lady who works in camp and who lives in camp came around and she said that she wanted to greet us the night before, but it was just too rainy and windy. Yes. She's been there since the camp was started. I forget now how long 17 ago. 17 years. 17 says. years. Yeah. And um, yeah, you can see that she loves what she does and uh, she, she just enjoys the guests. She was so friendly yeah. though. That was so nice to yeah, see. That stood out to me as yeah. well. Oh, and this was the first camp ever that you got to open and close the entrance gate yourself. That was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty neat. Huh? You did look over your shoulder a few times. Yeah, <laughs> Am I allowed sure. to say that? Yes, yes, yes to make sure. That, uh, you, as you stop there, you scour the area and make sure there might not be a lion or a leopard or something hiding in the bushes. <laughs> and then we got to Letaba. What can I say? Oh, deep, deep, deep inside my heart. So, it still is my favorite camp, I'll say it right now. The fact that things have changed so little there yes. is incredible to me. Um, we've stayed in those huts on the perimeter so often, and this time we got the perfect one right by the ablution facilities. I mean, we saw waterbuck, impala, wildebeest from our bedroom window from our stoop yes it's just right next to the restaurant the restaurant yeah no look i have no words there is not much water in the taba river Le taba river at the moment but the view is phenomenal it will always be i just love Le taba from beginning to end uh, what, what makes Le taba special for me is that when you introduced me to the park that was the first camp I ever stayed in. Yes. At bungalow number 82. I'll never, never forget. forget. Yes, that was the one we stayed in. And that's where, I think there was a mosquito that got hold of me over there. But I just <laughs> fell in love with the park from that day. And the camp, the camp is beautiful. I went to that um, museum, the elephant museum. The statue of yeah, Shaw, yes. Yeah, and see all those um, tusks, those massive tuskers that used to be. It was that was really very interesting and then walking through the camp and seeing the camping area and the other bungalows and chalets and things like that was really nice very active busy um, it was interesting to, for me to see that the shop is on a new spot now because the other one burnt down apparently yes. not yes. too long ago so yes. they have a new shop which only opened in august of this year so yeah no it was really cool and having been born in Sanin in Limpopo, we were only 100 kilometers from Palaboa. Yeah. So um, I only lived 150 kilometers from Letaba. I love to say I took my first steps in Letaba, <laughs> but I do believe that same mosquito bit me too there as a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite camp of all. Very nice. Olifants. The Olifants is a lovely camp. 
you know what? I think scenically speaking, yeah. it might be the most beautiful camp of all because yeah. of its location. Yes. I mean, it overlooks the river from every angle. Yes. Um, there where we went and we had our early, whatever, lunch or late breakfast brunch. Yes. Uh, and the food was awesome. Fantastic. Service was great. Yes. And overlooking the, the Olifants River, you could hear the hippos in the distance. That was, that was enjoyable. Took a walk there on the view deck where the people were sitting enjoying the views as well. That was really nice. No, I enjoyed I enjoyed staying there. Our little bungalow that we stayed in was also very comfortable. Right on the boundary fence. Yes. We didn't uh, take the expensive ones that overlook the other side where the river is. Yeah, they were a bit heavy priced, yeah. But we still saw an uh, elephant walking in the Olifants Riverbed. Yes. We saw giraffe from our stoop was the smallest bathroom I've ever seen. It was tiny. <laughs> um, but we had a bathroom. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, no complaints. Uh, the laundromat, the laundry, uh, the washing machines were out of order. Yeah. So we weren't able to do our laundry. And for three weeks we had to do laundry at least once. Yep. So that was a bit of a bother. The shop was good. Shop was nice. Yeah. We had some memories there. That's where we bought our first pair of binoculars. Correct. It was in the Willyfants shop. Yes. No, it was really enjoyable. I enjoyed Willyfants. Yeah, I had a good experience there too. Yeah. I think it is truly a beautiful camp. No, yeah, well, if you come to the park, you have to go and stay in Willyfants to yes. experience that view. Definitely. And what did you think about Balule? I loved Balule. I know you did. I really did. loved it. It's got a campsite to the one side and it's got uh, six little huts. Yes. Ron Galvel's blade basically to the other side. And that's also a social Camp. area. Everybody yes. chatting to each other, the yes. neighbors talking. Uh, the Looking for the owls together yes, with our spotlights. Shining, yeah, yes. Uh, holding the spotlight while others take pictures and stuff. Very nice. I enjoyed Balula very, very much. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any solar. There's definitely no electricity. There was a gas deep freeze and the a fridge. Three deep freezes that worked ran off of gas. No fridge, just deep freeze. Oh, okay, okay. And um, because they work off of the gas, they don't freeze as as well as yes. they should, but they keep it nice and they cold. They kept it cool, yes. And um, there's absolutely no electricity. The guys come and they hang a little uh, paraffin lantern by each, each oh. hut's little door. That was we brilliant. thought that was awesome. It yeah. burnt the whole night. Yes, yes, it lasted all night. And they came and said good night to each one each of person. us. That's amazing. You know, it was a totally different experience because there's absolutely no electricity. Yes. And when it when it sun sets, it's dark. Right. It's our fires yeah. and the lantern. And it's it's as if because there's no electricity. You hear the animals more. We heard the hyenas. We heard the lions roaring. It was and the jackals. It was it was really a, a, a great stay. I enjoyed it. Yes, and the uh, um, ablutions were also clean and neat and not too far. Yeah. So it was overall a fantastic experience. Very basic experience, and we loved it. Yeah. So then we moved on to Satara. That's another camp we've always enjoyed going to. But um, it's really, this is the first camp that we've came to this trip that we've seen the, where the commercialization is taking place. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, the camp is big. Um, it was very busy when we arrived there for check-in. It was, it was really hectic. Um, we, we wanted to stay in a bungalow there too, but it was just too expensive. So we camped there as well. And... Uh, yeah, that was our second night of camping. Good weather this time. Brilliant weather. Um, we also went to go buy food over there. That's where we first saw the commercial restaurants, not the Inglofus that they have, all the others that we stayed at before. Um, the Cattle Baron. It was the Cattle Baron, yeah. Yes. yeah. But then still, it was really nice. They got that massive deck. That was new, huge deck over there. And uh, I really enjoyed the water hole. That was still always been there. Uh, where the animals come to drink, where elephants and all of that come around. Lots there. of impala, yeah. wildebeest. But a very, very busy camp. So first time camping at Satara, 
Um, it was a good experience. The camping yeah. was not an issue for me because the weather was fine yeah. and I didn't have far to walk to the shower and the bathrooms. Yes. What about the two nights at Tambuati? Oh, that was, that was enjoyable. Uh, what I really enjoyed about that uh, tent that we stayed in, had four beds, so much space. It was comfortable. It wasn't too hot. Uh, we ventilated no. the place very nicely, so it was really enjoyable. Uh, it was the first time we spotted a honey badger. First time in our lives. Yes, yes. They had our, he raided our dirt bin, so that was enjoyable. And of course, we saw the genet. Yes. That was that was pretty cool. First and time we saw a genet, uh, other than on a night drive. Yes. And it was a, a nice wild camp. Oh. It was really. On the, on the boundary of the, what was that river? The dry Timbavati Timbavati river bed. Bed, yes. Yeah. So it was, it was really enjoyable. I enjoyed it there. I love Tambuati. Love, love, love. Yes. I wasn't aware that there were tents with bathrooms and kitchens. Yes. But, um, so I booked a four bed tent with communal ablutions. Uh, the ablution block was right behind our tent. No, it wasn't far at all. No. And the kitchen wasn't far either. So I love Tambuati. Our neighbors called you to come and have a look at a hyena at the fence. Yeah. Tambuati, fantastic experience. I enjoyed it, yes. The traffic comes in waves, eh? Yes. But I'm okay with how things are at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's not too hectic. No, it's not crazy at all. We just came off the N1 into Tromsburg to put in petrol. Now there's a specific reason why we like to stop here is because yeah at Afi Plus coffee shop and grill they make the nicest toasted sandwiches. They do. Uh, so we that's why we came just popped in here to get ourselves some toasted sandwiches and fill up with petrol. And they're so friendly the lady said to me now go sit in your car I'll bring it to you. So Wow. That's that's what the small little towns do, eh? Even the petrol attendant was super free. Yeah. So and it's much less crazier yes. than the filling stations on the N1 itself. Exactly. We ordered two of the same, the ones on brown and the other ones on white. Toasted ham cheese and tomato sandwiches with chips. Mm. In the Tromsberg. Chips. The chips are good. That's good. Marula. Marula Boom. No, it was it was really an interesting camp. It's a nice rustic only camping over there. Yes. But I found the ground extremely hard and we were very stony. And that's what punctured our um, mattress. That I had to lie every half an hour pumping it during the <laughs> night. So yeah. yeah. But otherwise, if that didn't happen, I think it would have been a comfortable stay. We were pretty close to the ablutions, very close to the kitchen. Um, the staff were very friendly. They brought us a table and chairs. Yes, they did. And even though the, 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 the guy tried to help me with the, with the peg, tent pegs into the ground while wetting the ground and stuff like that, because he knew the ground was very hard. But even he gave up eventually. Yeah, even he left after a while. <laughs> the cleanest ablutions in the park. Definitely. Um, by far, I have to say that, and it was raining again when we arrived, so that that mars a camping experience for me a little. Um, and I know you struggle a little more in rainy weather to pitch. Yeah, especially because it, a lot of times it's not just rain; it's wind and everything. So to do it on your own is pretty pretty complicated. But it, I got it up, you know, and we slept at least. So yes, that's all that counts. Um, and, we, and we were dry while we were sleeping. Our tent has never leaked. Never Mattress leaked. has, tent never. <laughs> yes. Game viewing in the area as far as lion are concerned. Crazy, that bit of road. Because Tambuti and Marula are right next to each other. A kilo apart. And uh, that gravel road down to Marula, we saw so much lion on that road. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. And uh, again, just, just situated further up or down the Timbavati River, yes. right next to uh, Tambuati. Yeah, there are beautiful campsites all along the river like that. So, I might return with a camper or a caravan one day. Yes. So our next stop was Orpen. Oh, what did you think of Orpen? 
you know, we wanted to stay in Orpen and they only have bungalows. They are such yeah. incredibly beautiful bungalows. I'm Pricey, but I'm glad we did it. Uh, I know you love the wraparound stoop as yes. much as I did. Yes, yes. And you? <laughs> yes, especially that we were sitting there by the table and you could see the water hole, oh. and you could see the giraffe and the zebra and the impala coming to drink. And the next morning when I went for a walk around the camp, I could even see elephant rushing to come and drink. Yeah, I, I heard them yeah. trumpet. Yeah. I saw wildebeest too. Yeah. It was fantastic. No, it was great. Nice facilities in, in, in camp too. Beautiful swimming pool. Yes. Folks from we met in Marula came to swim. And then the shop was small, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but we didn't need much there. And there's a coffee shop where you can buy hot beverages. Yeah, only coffee. Yeah. yeah. No restaurant or anything like that. And what I also found that changed over there was the was the Orpen, I can remember the Orpen gate and the Orpen camp being like one. And that has changed now. The gate isn't where it used to be. There's a different gate. Uh, the gate is far away from the camp. Or well, say far away, say 400 meters away yes. from the camp. And the filling station used to be in the camp. It's not anymore. It's there by the entrance gate now. Of Almost outside of the borders of the park for yes, me. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. That was that was different, but it was a comfortable stay. It was really enjoyable. I enjoyed it there. Great cooking facilities, fully equipped. Yes. A beautiful bathroom, and then I will remember the wildlife sightings because we saw our first leopard on yes. the strip on yes. the Orphan Road. Definitely. And then of course my favourite elephant with a half trunk. Oh. Sad. Very happy to have seen Orpen or experienced Orpen as an overnight visitor. Yes. Yep. Lower Sabi was next. Yes, Lower Sabi. So I booked a hut with communal ablutions. Yes. Now in the past a hut for us at Lower Sabi was one of those that I think it's three or four attached. Yes, yes. And I thought they had three beds but not sure. But then we got this dormitory style bungalow all in a row. Yes, yes. I was a little taken aback by that in the beginning, but it turned out fantastic. Yeah, the whole social thing, because everybody's like in a row and brying next to each other. So that was, I enjoyed that. I was the only one that started a fire with wood. <laughs> Everybody else has got their charcoal going, and then it started raining. And you know, I thought, ah, my fire, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I don't have a good history in Slower Sabu of making fire. <laughs> and um, it survived the rain. Actually, it, the fire, the, it, it fueled your fire. Fueled the yeah, fire. yeah. And it went beautifully. We bright liquor. It was, it was really nice. Our neighbors were great. Chatted. Yeah, I had a very nice chat. Yeah. Afterwards, our neighbors on the other side, we offered our the remains of our fire and they happily accepted because their charcoal fire had died. Uh, yeah. That's just what the whole Kruger experience was about. Yeah, they came and used yeah, our fire to yeah, oh, further, It was just yeah. so fantastic. Yeah, really nice. nice fully equipped. You had a pot to go cook out. Pop in. Pop in yes. Kitchen is right there. Ablution is right at the back. Yes. So um, huge shop. Massive shop and a big mug and bean restaurant there with a beautiful deck that overlooks the Sabi River. So the commercialization aspect very clear in yeah, the south, definitely, uh, or in Lower Sabi at least. Uh, entrance uh, had changed again. Yeah, another one that's the entrance to the camp changed. But yeah, uh, filling up with fuel, the staff were friendly. There. Yes, very oh yes, friendly. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. That stood out to me. Um, so it was a good experience in Lower Sabi. No, it was a good stay. We're listening to the radio pretty often while we're driving now and uh, we heard reports from yesterday that there's a major police and traffic officer presence on the roads for this festive season. And I must say, today we have seen not one. Not a single one? Not one so far. So. And we've been on the road since just after five this morning. So I don't know where they've gone to. That's a bit surprising to me yes. because these is, I think this is the busiest traveling weekend this year at least exactly. until people start returning home. Yeah. So I'm surprised by that. But I must say people at this stage are still driving all right. I haven't seen any crazy driving as such. Yeah, people are speeding, a lot of them are speeding but it's, it's still no 
chances and taken and stuff like that. Do you know what bothers me more than than the speeding? Because I think if they go over, they may be going 130, yeah. but the following distances, that I think is a is a problem. problem yes. Listen, check this. Yay, Northern Cape, here we are, crossing the Orange River. How's that for timing? Perfect. It's my river, this one. Yay. The mighty orange. You know which one is next? Skukuza. <laughs> no, I enjoyed our stay in Skukuza. It was also just one night. Cute like, little tent. Safari tent was nice, two beds. But it had a lot of space, you know, it was it was pretty spacious. We had a nice veranda over there. Quite far from the ablution facilities for me though. No, unfortunately that was yes. quite a distance. They were fully booked. Fully booked, yeah. Yes. But what I also found really interesting in a lot of the camps is they say they're fully booked, but then a lot of the places are empty over those evenings. But it's fine. One doesn't know yeah. how the system works. But I must tell you, it was fantastic. You spoiled me taking me for dinner that evening to the um, station, the Kruger station. That was brilliant. Well, how can we beat a restaurant with a station and a train thing? And sit in a train car eating our dinner. Yeah. It was just good and the service was great. Our waiter was fantastic, yeah, yeah. yes. So no, that was also good. The only thing that I, that I was quite disappointed about with Kukuza was that I wanted to go and check out the museum because there was a specific thing I was looking for in the museum. Oh, the lion skin. Yes. yes. And it was closed over weekends. This Kukuza Museum is closed over weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. That I don't understand because I would presume that's their busy times so that people would want to see that. And we were there on a Saturday and a Sunday. Yes. So uh, folks might only be there over the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the, the restaurant was fine. The view from there over the Savi River from the restaurant. Also a cattle baron was very really nice. The commercialization aspect, of course, is nowhere clearer than at Skukuza. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not familiar with the side where the Skukuza Safari Lodge and the spa, that those things are. That's new to me. Yes. Uh, and the camp is huge and busy and bustling, but I love it. But the history, the, the, the history of the Kruger Park is in Skukuza. Yeah, I just love it. I love it there. Let's not even start about the game viewing between Lower Sabi and Skukuza. I mean, like we saw leopard, like we've never seen leopard before. <laughs> yes. And I think it's like common knowledge by now how much I love leopard. Yes. So, um, yeah, you know, for us that was a big spoil. No, it was great. We then went to Pretoria Skop. Yes. Um, yeah, well, you know, Pretoria Skop. It's a lovely camp, but we got a feel. I, I got a feeling that it's been neglected more than the others. I got a stepsister vibe there. Oh, yes, no, definitely. The, there's the, they're all busy fixing. I can see when we drove around and looked around there that they were fixing the thatch roof, putting on new thatch and stuff. They were doing that, but there's just so much, so many issues. They haven't had electricity there for a few days already when we arrived and they had to run on their backup generator so they've been running on the backup generator so often that they also have to turn it off every now and then because it's working so hard so when you want to go put in petrol then they've turned off the backup generator they don't have petrol you go to the shop to go and buy something all the lights are off but they can help you still because they've got their own little five horsepower generator or five kilowatt generator running there but it's, there's no lights on you've got to walk around with your um, cell phone to light for yourself and we're not talking about load shedding here, we're talking about an ESCOM situation. But babe, I think they said it was the day before we arrived that the yes. power had gone off. Yeah. Um, and they have a Wimpy there as their restaurant. And I found it very strange that they would be closed when the power is off and not have a generator. Yeah. So, um, and again here I booked a hut with communal ablution. And thinking I was going to get one of those cute little ones. Yes. And then we got this dormitory vibe again. This time the big rondable at the end of a, of, of, a, of a, like a row. And they gave us the one where maintenance was taking place. And the others. We were the yeah. only one that you could live in. The others next to it were being repaired. 
So I was disappointed when we drove up and all I saw was danger tape and thatch hanging out. But it turned out very well. Um, the uh, basin in the Rondavel helped a lot in the yes. bungalow. Um, the communal kitchen and the ablution were right across the road. Right there. Very social folks in the in the communal kitchen as we were boiling our baby potatoes in our kettle yes, yes. because we forgot our pot. But uh, it was like a gathering over there. Everybody showing their sightings on their <laughs> cell phones. Who <laughs> saw what? That was that was pretty fun. I must say that was different to a lot, most of the other camps we stayed at. That's that true. Was really, people were socialising there in the kitchen. That was nice, and we met a nice couple uh, the following day before we left it was it was great and the walk around the drive around the camp unfortunately it was raining most of the time we were in Pretoria's Corp so to walk around was difficult so we took a drive through the camp and saw what it looked like yeah it was fantastic I have to chuckle the one gentleman was so proud of his lion sightings yes. and like <laughs> big male lions had walked right past the yes. vehicle's doors yeah. So yeah, we loved it. So that made up for all the negatives. Yes. I do hope that they um, give Pretoria Scorp equal attention and fix it up. I think they are because of all the thatch, new, uh, some of the bungalows that have got new thatch on. And the fact that the one we stayed in, they're busy doing maintenance on it. I think they are starting to. I say within a year or two's time, I think Pretoria Scorp will be fine again. No, I'm sure it will be. We'll go and check it out. We'll have to. If you look over there, that's the road going to Port Elizabeth and this is the road going to Cape Town. So many more people turned off to go to Port Elizabeth here at Colesburg than that are going to Cape Town. The roads all of a sudden become so quiet. Love that. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. So many people going to the Eastern Cape. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you had that thought. I did. Thank you. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a safe journey. Yeah. What does it say? Cape Town 782. 782. Okay. I have to tell you, our first traffic officers will probably be at Beaufort West. Yeah, I they thought are they always would, on duty there. I thought there would be outside of Colesburg. Nothing. Nothing. Not a single one. Yep. Berg in Dahl. Another wild camp. Oh, yes. Um, with face brick bungalows. Face brick bungalows with thatch roof which matches, which fits in perfectly in the surroundings, I would say. Yes, me too. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. We camped over there, so we had to pitch the tent and it also rained again. <laughs> that day, there was all those, when we went to get the restaurant to go and eat, we had all those flying ants flying around the whole time. Yes, so. I thought the thatch need a bit of maintenance. Yes, it does. The thatch on the bungalows. Um, the shop is big. Big shop. Yeah, a nice big um, model of a rhino in reception. I enjoyed seeing that. Yes. Um, and then the, we had dinner at the restaurant. It was just okay, I thought. Um, the waiter was too busy to give everyone um, the proper attention so I don't think the service was fantastic I think they were a bit understaffed yes yeah. that evening especially yeah. um, but we had a good night the, the mattress didn't leak fortunately the, the triple repair of duct tape super glue and uh, the patch well, did the trick <laughs> yes. I was quite close to the ablution which I was very happy about yes. and it was a good experience um, this is now in the far south of the of the park. Yes. Um, yes. I'm, I'm glad we saw Bergendal again. Oh, the surroundings of Bergendal were really nice. And their setting, that's why it's called Bergendal. There, there were mountains and valleys. Yes. So Bergendal, it was, it's, it's a beautiful place. Very like, appropriate really, name. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot the beautiful swimming pool. Oh, yes. A really, really nice swimming pool. And the conference centre and all of that. Too. And I think if one spends a few days there, you can definitely do that rhino trail because that seems to be unique in the park. Yeah, the fact that it's for the visually impaired as well, that they've got braille next to the, what's, what's written there, is Special. fantastic. They yeah. can enjoy it as well. Yes. Yeah. Malalane, or Malalan as most people call it. Oh man, let me tell you. <laughs> After our camping at Bergendal, I, was now, I decided, listen, I've had enough now of that. And we were supposed to camp at Malalani again, 
I went when we got, went to go and check in at the gate because you got to go check in at Malalani gate to be able to go and sleep. Yes. And I asked them, do they have a bungalow available? And they only have five. And they had one for us. So I upgraded to a bungalow, four bed bungalow, shower, bathroom, doesn't have a kitchen, but it was so comfortable. But it, you're naughty yeah. because you went inside to the bungalow yeah. and to go check it out and film and you came back and you like looked so down in the dumps. <laughs> I say, so what now? You say, no, if you knew what it looked like, you wouldn't have upgraded. And I thought, yeah. You know, we decided we're gonna check before we upgrade, and we didn't check this time. Yeah. You just upgraded, but then when I got inside, it was spectacular. Yeah. I loved it. Beautiful it's, bathroom. It's in such good condition. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You can see the maintenance on it is very good. Yes, um, I agree. And the walk around the camp I did was beautiful. The massive trees. Uh, it's on the Crocodile River boundary fence the impalas walk around the whole camp um, apparently our hyenas come to the fence regularly we never saw it we passed out really early that night we even have our own little lapa where we could go bry under and everything which was which well the was bry was separate but we could eat under the lapa, under the lapa yes it was, was fantastic so we had dinner and breakfast under our own little yes, lapa yes, we did. i saw i saw impala on the crocodile bridge side of the fence yes. that you mentioned that and then um i wouldn't mind camping there in better weather i must tell you again in a caravan or a motorhome we saw folks there in a yeah. motorhome yeah. because every campsite is on the border fence yes and you can you can see the wildlife hang out there they just stay there all the time so, so that'll be fun so we, we both love mananani uh, definitely a good experience yeah, I'll definitely be back there Crocodile Bridge. Crocodile Bridge. Or like Lion Central, the way you want to call it. The amount of lions we saw around Crocodile Bridge. It was wild immediately. Um, what was interesting is as we arrived at Crocodile Bridge, we saw the new entrance to the Crocodile Bridge gate. And um, it looked like a toll booth, so fancy it was there now. Totally different. Yeah, you don't come in through. Crocodile Bridge Camp as we used to in the past. Right. So yeah, no, that was that was different, but it's very neat and tidy there. We, the reception is out there as well. Our little tent was great. Oh, the two-man tent was brilliant. It was fantastic. Very comfortable. Yes. Fridge, cupboard. Everything we needed. Uh, ablution facilities weren't that close. A little bit far for me, but yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. Very social. All sat oh. on our decks and like shouted across at each other what did we see today yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then two, two tents away from us saw a cheetah and we said no, 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 no. <laughs> and we spent two days there so yes. it was very really nice they have a little coffee shop where we ordered some hot chocolate from yes uh, I took a walk around the, the camp there and to go look at the camping sites where they camp with the caravans and stuff such a social activity there too so many campers staying there and you can see they're going to spend a long time there with their Christmas lights and everything yes there, so. very festive atmosphere yeah. and a small shop with everything you need yes um, we just needed wood and cool drink and beer and they had all of that, all of that you yeah. don't need more than that so it's not that commercial at Crocodile Bridge no. Uh, the sightings were fantastic especially lion and elephant yep. and then um, it was a good place to end off our visit i think yeah no it was i enjoyed crocodile bridge very much yeah beautiful view of the crocodile river yeah, from the bungalows stunning. that concludes our wrap up of all the camps if we forgot one because i simply went by memory now we will just do a little voiceover and include it here yeah. but i think we covered them all we did sitting here thinking about something we did I think in 2000 or 2001 tell me how much of this you remember I think we went in 1999 and 2000 we went with my folks yes. to the park yes. two, two consecutive years yeah. and then you and I were so obsessed when we got back to Cape Town we still lived in Cape Town at that time 
that we said we want to write to the South African Parks Board and we want to ask them if we can go and live in the park for a year. Yes. So we did it. Yep. We wrote the letter. It was snail mail back then. No emails. <laughs> Next thing we receive a letter back from David Mabunda. Yep. I think he was the chief park warden of the park at that point. Yes. He said, absolutely cool, what do you have in mind? <laughs> so we were still young and we hadn't thought this through. Yeah. We didn't know what to answer. Yes. Do you remember I that? I remember that clearly, clearly, clearly. Yeah. We just knew we wanted to go and live there. Just but we didn't have a plan. Yeah, it was crazy, but it was incredible that he answered us. That was yeah, wild. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think I still have the letter somewhere. Uh, it's very special, but I don't think we ever responded. No, we didn't respond. Because we didn't know we didn't what know. to how say. Are gonna, how are we going to survive? We're just staying for a year in the Kruger Park. You know? We're a little bit more mature now. We yeah. think things through a little <laughs> more. <laughs> we saw our first traffic officer just here by Three Sisters, where we filled up with petrol. <laughs> The only car here at the filling station putting in fuel. Lanesburg. Lanesburg. I'm super surprised by how quiet the road has become. Oh, fantastic, eh? Sure. My love. Yes, my angel. Are you ready to get home? Yes, I am. Um, 20 to 5, and you say we'll be home by about 8 o'clock? I'm hoping for before 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm, you don't know what happened, so I'm saying between 7 and 8 we should be out. Okay, and um, this time of year it's still light in, in our area, so um, yeah. we should arrive before dark. Definitely, definitely. You do realize that over the last three and a half weeks we um, created a few bad habits. Um, Such as? Such as eating ice cream every day. <laughs> Such as drinking beer and yeah. coke all day long. Yeah. But um, that, that's, we'll get back into our normal habits as soon as possible. But it's also the most difficult time of year to get back into those habits. But I'm not saying I'm not going to drink any beer now. <laughs> 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 There's a very quick qualification. Yeah, no, especially this time of the year. Yeah, it's hard, eh? Yeah, yeah. We're coming from a holiday in the bushveld, and now we're going to have a coastal holiday. Yes, back home is holiday season. It's full of holiday makers. Yeah, so. you can't help but feel the spirit. Yes. I look forward to seeing how full Strand is. I think uh, apparently the weather's good, so I think it's going to be packed. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. But I do think back to the park. I find myself thinking back to our drives. Oh, I just, love that place too, eh? Yeah, very nice. Very nice. All right, so uh, two and a half, maybe three hours or so, and then we should be home. Yep. I'm ready. Yes, ma'am. Policeman's pulling them over for crossing a solid white line when overtaking. It's really glaringly obvious how in our home province the visibility of traffic police has increased. Yeah. It's wild. Well, we've seen, I've seen, since we've been in the Western Cape, we've seen about 15 police vehicles. At least. Yeah. They fast, eh? It was like a movie now. <laughs> yeah. He came speeding past us with his lights. Curtis is sitting happily. <laughs> he's, so, he's so law abiding. But when I saw them flashing in the review, but I thought, oh no, what did I do wrong? <laughs> oh, but you didn't say anything yeah, to me. Yeah, the yeah. next thing I saw was he was right next to us. And then he flew past and he pulled the other guy over. He's fast though, eh? Yeah, he is. But there were like four of them that crossed on a, that passed yeah, on a solid white yeah. line. He just picked one now, so. I felt that, he, that, that they uh, should have pulled over all four. But anyway. As long as they make an example of someone because the people are quite aggressive on the road yeah and they pass on solid white lines very dangerous it's wild here now 
They now pulled over another guy here. Yes, you're right. It's the Audi. Yes. So was it also back there? So they earmarked him and he came chasing yes. now. Was he one of the four you were talking about? Yes, he was. Wow. So he first dealt with that vehicle and then he came looking for this one. Yeah, it's amazing. Eh? Approaching Stellenbosch from the club mid side is always a beautiful drive. Oh, yes. Half past six. Yep. It's always so nice to come over this hill from Stellenbosch, passing Somerset West, and looking down there, Strand. Oh, it's been so long. Oh, it is, eh? Look good, it's still there. <laughs> we left on 22 November, and today is 16 December. Crazy. It's the longest we've been away from home for a long, long time. It is, eh? Yeah. Oh. And it is 1843. And the sun is shining. Yeah, we're still going to have sunshine until past 8 this evening. High in the sky still. That still blows my mind. Yeah, I'll never yeah, forget yeah. when you came down for the first time at the end of 93. Yes. You couldn't understand how the sun was still shining and... Well, no, why it was still, how it still could be light after 8 o'clock. You know what was, we were still sitting there, I was sitting there with your dad and we were in that flat. Yes. And watching the news at 8 o'clock, the 8 o'clock news on TV. And then suddenly it hit me like a bomb, but the sun's still shining outside. At uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. I didn't evening. know that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get that. Uh, and yeah. we just said to each other that we would, the gates closed at the park 15 minutes ago already. Yes. And it's like And it's getting dark, dark there now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, crazy. Check this out. Yeah, I can imagine what it looked like here yesterday and today. The wind's pumping, but the people are here in full force. In full force. Oh, how beautiful. Yes. The seagulls. It's good to be home. Yeah, it's so nice to be home. If they can't be on the beach, they'll be on the promenade. Yeah. Looks like it was a very busy day. That's for sure. <laughs> All I can do is laugh. I can't believe we're back. <laughs> it's nice to be back home. Uh, still got to offload the vehicle and all of that. It's nice, really nice to be back home, but I missed the park already. Uh, we must start planning our next trip there. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, for us, it was an epic trip. Uh, we did 7,426 kilometers in total there and back so it was quite a distance we traveled in many kilometers but it was worth it i really hope you guys enjoyed this trip that we did to the kruger national park uh, we enjoyed it thoroughly and um, we want to ask you to please subscribe if you're a new viewer give us a thumbs up every time you watch our videos and uh, we will see you in the next episode bye